To musím rychle naučit. <laughs> čísla, čísla pět je. Na, na to můžeš psát čítat, jo. <laughs> Teď je pět minut před workshopem. <laughs> Hlídá to tam někdo? Hlídá to tam někdo? A pověřil si jeho, nebo jenom si odešel? 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, uh, what time is it? One minute. Uh, my, my session chair uh, went to get some breakfast. I have no idea how to switch the display to this computer. Any ideas? Já mám drát do počítače mám, jo, ale tady někde se musí, nebo počkej, ty potřebuješ i jo. Je, je to, to je tohle. Drát možná to nejde rozvědět. Jo, jo, počkej, no vůbec já. Já jsem to hledal tady. Jo, 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 So, hello everybody, uh, my name is Miro Hronchok, I work at Red Hat uh, remotely from Prague for the Brno office, uh, thank you. And this is talk or workshop that's not called Site and Stop Writing Native Python Extensions in C. I realized, so I prepared the slides later, that native extension is not a thing, but still you are here. So you probably knew what I meant, or at least you think something. Uh, what I meant is extension modules, but yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we do a little exercise because yesterday there was a party and it's early in the morning. So you think of your Python skills and then you raise your hand with one, two, three or four fingers. Is there anybody here who is not able to do that because of some... No, okay, thank you. Uh, so then you raise like something like this and then you pair yourself with a buddy. So if you are a beginner, you should have a very experienced buddy and you will work on stuff I'll tell you to work on together. Uh, preferably, the more experienced guys should stand up and seek some beginners because for beginners it might be awkward to seek some expert guys. I know this is an awkward thing on a workshop. You're probably sitting next to your friend or something like that, but this also makes sure that you do not talk about your uh, other projects while uh, you are having this workshop. Is this fine with you or nobody's moving or raising any hands? I mean it. You're not going to start without it. Like at the same time, yeah, you don't need to do that. But while you are not doing it, uh, apparently, you can go to GitHub and grab this repository. If there is a problem with connection, I have one USB stick with the data and more empty USB sticks without the data, so I can hand it to somebody and then we can distribute it. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's just sit here for a couple of minutes before you start doing this and see you then, probably. I mean it, I see no hands and I really mean it. Raise your hands. I, I think myself number four and uh, establish what guru is. If you have multiple Python projects on GitHub and stuff, then it's fine, you're a guru. Let's think about it like that. Now, everybody looks at me, and not everybody can pair with me, so just look at each other and pair, uh, keep their hands there. Yeah, yeah, you're, Marvin is number 10. Do we, do we have number minus 10 so we can pair up somebody? 
Okay, now look at each other and please pair. Do we have some ones over here? Cool, do we have some fours? Four, one, you're sitting next to each other. You are done. That's how you roll. Okay, can some four seek this guy over here, please? It would really help me if you follow my instructions, but if you are not interested, we can go home. I mean, it's Sunday morning. Guys? Okay, whatever. Um, do you at least have the, the repository cloned or something? Or is that a problem as well? You got? Okay. There are several files in the repo. Um, I will have some code examples in the slides and you will find them in this file, all of them. Uh, so if you wanna like copy paste something, you don't need to letter by letter or copy it from the screen, you can use the, uh, this file and seek the code example in it. Also, do you have Cython and IPython and stuff like that on your computer or anybody need a live uh, Fedora or whatever with this? Cython, uh, package is Python 3 Cython and probably capital C as well. I'm not sure. It is Python 3 capital C. Python, yeah, that's it. Uh, if there are troubles with the connection about the packages, we can boot some live systems that should probably already have those packages. Meanwhile, uh, about site and what it is, uh, you can find more information on scienton.org it's a programming language, uh, which is similar to Python, and you can type statically uh, using types from C or C++, or maybe even Fortran, but I have no knowledge of Fortran, so just forget it. And it's also a compiler from this Python language to C or C++, depending on what typing are you using. And it compiles the stuff to Python extension module, uh, or even to standalone apps, but uh, those standalone apps will still require uh, Python runtime and libraries, so it's not so standalone. When you write Cython, it feels like Python, but it works like C. So you have the Python experience as a programmer, but then you get the profit of uh, boost and stuff like that from C. Yeah, sec faults. Yeah, you can get sec faults. Uh, I don't know. If you miss sec faults from Python, this is a way to do it easily. All you need is to, I don't know, access an index in an array that's out of the bound and you get a sec fault. Wow. Okay. Uh, I have read this very good book and if you are really interested in Python after this workshop, I really recommend to getting it and it's a very good book and you can get all the information you need. This workshop will be only a little taste of Python. Um, if you, how many of you have ever written an extension module for Python in C or C++ or something like that? Few, not many. I looked at the source. Yeah, how many have yeah. seen some sources at least? Half, okay. So for those who haven't seen any sources, you are lucky. Uh, it, yeah, do you agree? Yeah, it's ugly. Uh, you cannot write it, you cannot read it. You will try to poke your eyes out and everything. So, never mind. If you want to extend Python with C or C++, uh, you can use this thing. Uh, and usually you do it because of performance or because you need to interact with C or C++ libraries or code. Uh, you write the C code, uh, you include Python H, and then you do a lot of crazy dancing to create uh, objects and classes in language that doesn't support them and stuff like that. Uh, it hurts to write, it hurts to read, it hurts to maintain, and if you want to keep it compatible with legacy Python and Python, uh, 
it's almost well, it's possible, but it's harder than with normal Python code. Uh, Cython makes all of this easy. Uh, it's easy to write, it's easy to read, it's easy to maintain, and it's easy to keep it both compatible with legacy Python and Python. This is an example of Python code. Is there anybody who is not capable of comprehending this kind of code? Great. So it's a Fibonacci uh, sequence stuff. It doesn't generate a sequence. It will just get you the nth number of the sequence by generating the sequence internally. Uh, higher the number, longer it takes. And the code is pretty easy. You just start with zero and one, and then you just you know count it. If you get this code, you can copy it from the from the Cyton, uh PRX file, and you paste it into IPython. Mm, let me see. It's this very first thing. If you copy something and you run IPython or something like that, you can just use this magic. Uh, because if you paste it, it will not work. Now we have this f function in here, uh, and I can just do stuff like two, three, four, etc. And if I run 90, it is a very large number, and I can use I can use time it, which is also a IPython thing. So I can, for example, run 190, and I can use time it. And I don't know why, but if you time it, it takes like 10 times more time, but it times it anyway. Uh, <laughs> there, are some, there are some numbers about how long does it take. It says per loop and it says some number. I don't know what this number really means, but if you compare two results of time, it, it actually gives you some idea what's faster or slower. Now, a uh, good thing about uh, Cyton is that this is valid Cyton code. Everything that's valid Python code is a valid Cyton code. I think everything, almost everything normal. So we can take it and we can maybe compile it with Cyton and, and run it. But um, we, to make it like perform even better, we should add static typing. Um, you can see now on the top is the Python thing and on the bottom is the Cyton thing. And there are a few uh, more things. The, the argument to the function is no longer just a letter, it's an integer. And then we have a new keyword, not known in Python, and it's cdef. Basically, it's me, I am defining this C variable, and I, or declaring, and uh, it's gonna be an integer, and it's gonna be this letter, or word. Also, you can do multiple at once, on the second line, uh, these are going to be long integers and it's going to be A and B and they're going to have some values. And that's it. Otherwise, the code stays the same. And if you want to just try it quickly in uh, IPython, you can load an extension called Cyton Magic. I don't know where it comes from, but I guess on Terora when you install Cyton and IPython both, it's just there. And then you can use two percent marks and Cyton, and then this thing is gonna be compiled like when you define it. Uh, so if I just go and grab this whole thing, and go here, and go paste, there is a syntax error. <laughs> Maybe you have to do this before you paste. And now just copy it without it. Yeah, now I have this function. You can see I can run it and it gives some results. Uh, if I give it 90. Uh, and I scroll back to 90, it ends with zero and starts with two. Looks like the same number. And you can, of course, uh, 
time it. I will time again the, the original one. And now I'm gonna time the the new one. Uh, and you can see we are talking uh, about tens of microseconds in here and about hundreds of nanoseconds in here. In case you don't know, nanoseconds are smaller than microseconds. <laughs> one thousand of them to create one. So this is like, I don't know, two magnitudes or whatever boost. And all we did uh, is we took the code and we added some, some keywords and make it static. Of course, uh, some weird things might happen if you use site fib and you just give it a string. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I didn't try it before. It's an exception and not in Segfault, which is cool. What happens if I just go here and use the original one? It's another exception, but the same type, type error. So that's it. But maybe if the code would be different, you could get weird stuff. Okay, normally you don't use sight and magic because it's magic and you don't use magic in your code usually if you don't study at Hogwarts. But uh, so if you have a module and you install it with setup.py and setup tools, you can use this uh, dancing around to make it work. You just type setup.py install and everything compiles. Um, there is an easy way, uh, easier way, it's called Cytonize, but it doesn't work with setup tools, and it only works with this utils. And mostly now when you call this utils, setup tools is gonna be called instead, so this is a better thing to, to call. The, the new things are the second line, you from Cyton this utils, you import build extension, and then you say in setup that, that build extension is build extension, it's a little bit more verbose than it's supposed to be probably normally, and then you just give it an extension, the name, and the name of the file. You usually use PyYX extension for side code. And a good thing is to add a classifier, but it's not something that is really important for this to run. It's saying it's written in Cyton. If you have this in setup.py, then uh, when you run a setup.py install, setup.py uh, build X or whatever, uh, it works. The only problem I found is if you have uh, install requires in your setup file and you say Cyton inside and then somebody goes and doesn't have Cyton and goes pip install whatever and uh, it produces an import error on the second line because when the file is parsed you don't have Cyton yet and stuff like that. So if you want to like work around it you have to do some little dancing like trying to import it first and stuff like that. So now about typing. This is a Python code. Uh, it's also a Cyton code. Nothing is typed, and like by you by saying it, but things have types, right? Uh, B is the list, for example. But if you want to type things statically in uh, Cyton, you have to use cdef. You already seen it. Uh, most of the uh, types has like normal names you would expect. Um, Usually, sometimes it's like Python and, and C. So if you need to have a float in Python and you want to have a double precision, you put here double because that's the C type and stuff like that. Um, it's also possible to declare uh, them like on the same line, multiple things, and it's also possible to give them some values. You've seen that in the Fibonacci example. There is nothing uh, really weird about this. The thing is, uh, here you can see long int and before there was just a long, it's basically the same thing. Are there any deterministic types? Like <laughs> some types that you, you know how many bits they actually contain? Like you mean like the number in the name of the type? In 64. Yes. yes, I'm not sure about this. Uh, probably this is, not. This is probably file-specific, compiler-specific, and architecture-specific. <coughs> Which is the reason why I want to use type. Okay, uh, I don't know the answer to this question, sorry. Okay. Uh, probably a good idea is to 
go to documentation of Cyton, which is on docs.cyton.org and try to look it there. I never really needed such press, like to have the exact idea how long these types are. Um, Thank you. Uh, so, pointers, arrays, and build. Uh, so, if you need a pointer, you just put an uh, asterisk before the variable name, which is probably the same way you do it in C. If you need like a pointer to a pointer, uh, which feels very C-ish to have pointers to pointers to pointers, you just multiply the stars. Even if you like pointers to functions, you can do it. And if you need a static array, you can uh, here you can use size t, so maybe you can also use int whatever number also automatically, I don't know. Uh, you just say there are, it's an array of three elements. Uh, you, you can only use constants and numbers uh, in here. You cannot make it based on variable because Cyton translates to C89 and it doesn't work there. Uh, here you can see if you wanna get the the pointer to a thing you use ampersand in before, which is probably also the same way you do it in C. Uh, but you cannot dereference the value or like, sorry, get the value out of the pointer by stars because uh, then it has a different meaning in Python probably. So you can always use like a zeroth element of an array and that gives you the, vo uh, the value. Uh, that works in C too. There is also an operator for that, and, but you have to import from Cyton dot operator, import the reference, and then the codes get very ugly. So this is probably better. Uh, one special type is bint, which is like a Boolean integer. Uh, in your Cyton code, it's true or false, but in the generated C code, it's gonna be zero or, or one. Uh, it works as expected, so true is anything but zero, and false is zero. You can also have structs uh, and unions, and it's, you, can, you can use cdef or ctypedef. The only difference is with ctypedef, it's gonna be a typedef struct in C and etc. cetera, uh, but from your site and code, it works exactly the same, uh, you cdef, your name of the struct and name of the variable is the very last uh, line. If you want to initialize a, a struct, you just you can use something like a constructor that's automatically gener generated. You can give it the positional arguments or name arguments, or you can just get a new struct and then access each of those. Uh, things inside and set them separately. I have no idea what the initial value would be if it's gonna be zero or some random thing, but as is in forest camp, if you don't initialize your memory, you never know what you're gonna get. So probably better to always initialize the values. And also you can just give a dictionary, like to assign the dictionary to that struct and it works which is probably a good way if you have dictionaries in Python and you wanna convert them to structs, you just do this and it works. Okay, functions, uh, there are three type of, or three kinds of functions, uh, dev, cdef, and cpdev. And dev function is something you're gonna use from Python later. Like you, you write it in Python, you, compile your module, then you import it from Python, and it works. It has a Python interface. If you use cdef for functions, they will not be visible from Python. You can only use this for your internal functions. They, they differ, they have a return type. As you can see, cdef, it returns long, but the def doesn't return any type because it returns Python whatever object. And this is faster inside, but it, you cannot access it from, from Python. And if you need both, if you wanna access the function from inside your code in Cyton and also export it for others to use it from Python, you can use cpdef 
which basically is the same thing as if you would like copy paste the code and have it with the return type and without it. So it's a shortcut, so you don't have to do this repeat yourself. If you wanna have classes, uh, normally in, uh, in Python, in extension modules, you don't have classes, but you have extension types. It has some differences. For example, if you have an object, which is an instance of class, and you, just, you can just give it new, new variables inside, like self dot whatever in the middle of the code, this doesn't work here. Uh, so everything that's a variable of the instance, you have to define it at the beginning of the class. Uh, so if we're gonna use self dot nr, we need to uh, declare it in the beginning. All these things are normally private by default. You can make them public, which means even from Python, then you can reset them and read them uh, by adding cdef public double whatever. Or you can use uh, a read only, which is read only for public, no writable. Uh, if it's fine with you, you can use normal init, but if you're gonna do some C magic, you should always use synit, uh, C init, and the only problem is if you like something like if there is an init. Uh, self does not exist yet in Python and blah, blah. And now you are trying to access a memory and this could end up in some ugly sec faults. If you like, so you can use it to have sec faults. But if you don't wanna have sec faults, then you have to use C in it. And this makes sure this is like called every time before in it and stuff like that. And here we have a cool thing. We have a pointer to double, which is essentially a a buffer of, of doubles or array of doubles, but we have to initialize it. So we use malloc, which is probably something you would use in C, but to have it in, uh, in Cython, you have to C import it, and that's on the very top. Some libc is basically a wrapper in, in uh, Cython about libc, so you, from the libc lib, you see import malloc and free to use it. And you can use size of uh, for free. And this double with asterisk in those uh, parentheses, um, that's casting. It has a little bit different syntax than from C for whatever reasons. So if you wanna cast something, you wanna use HTML brackets or whatever they are called. So when you, when you malloc some memory, uh, then you should see if it went well. It usually goes well today, but sometimes you may be out of memory or whatever, so you should raise memory error for that. And it's a good thing to free your memory if you don't wanna get leaks for your sec faults to have something to leak on your sec faults or whatever, then you should, uh, you should free uh, this thing, so that's uh, the method that's called dialog. Uh, these two methods have to be def, not cdef, not cpdef. I don't know why exactly is that, but all the other methods can be whatever functions could be. Now, this is not a talk, it's a workshop, so let's start do something. Uh, we're gonna use a knapsack problem, which is a problem from combination or combinatorial optimization. Uh, it's a very common thing. Basically, you have a pool of things and you have a knapsack with a given capacity and each of those things has a uh, weight and cost and you just try to put more expensive combination into your backpack. There are hundreds of algorithms to do this, the easiest way is brute force. So you just get every possible combination of those items, you calculate the weight and the cost. If it fits into your knapsack, then you try to locate the maximum cost of those, and if it doesn't fit, you just use a different combination. Uh, this is of course exponential, it takes a long time to do, and if you have this uh, repo cloned from the beginning, there is a little code 
uh, in in the knapsack folder and there are some some files like uh, data loader and init pi you don't have to look at those if you don't want to and then there is solver pi and c solver pi ix and it's the same code exactly the same code the only thing that changes is the uh, name of the class just to make it clear uh, this is a uh, solver class that solves this problem by brute force. It has a init that takes a sec, which is uh, something that looks like this. Uh, every sec has an ID. You don't need to even use an ID. It has a count, which is essentially the same thing as if you ask how many items are in there. It has a capacity and it has a list of other digs that contains weight and cost. Now, if you initialize your solver and then you call solve, it returns the maximum possible combination as a list, list of uh, booleans and max cost, which is the maximum cost you can fit in the knapsack. Uh, sometimes uh, multiple combinations get can have the maximum cost, of course, but the maximum cost is deterministic for each net sec. I will just hide this, make it a little larger. And the main routine is here, solve. Uh, it just saves the number of attempts, so it's easier accessible. And it says the maximum cost is something negative because cost will be always positive. And for each number in range from zero to, to, to the power of number of items, uh, you generate a combination from that end, which is basically a little code that will take an integer and turn it into a list of bits. And you calculate the weight and cost, which is done like uh, if, there, if this is true in the combination, then you add the weight and cost and you get the final number and if it fits into the backpack and it's better than what we have uh, said before we will save the new cost and a new combo it's very easy code uh, but it takes <coughs> ages sometimes there is a readme and it has some some code snippets for bash uh, this for example python free setup by build x in place Make sure that you can run the code from uh, this very folder. <coughs> this builds the C solver, which is here, and it builds it. And now you have uh, this shared object file, and you can import it. Uh, then if I'm going to call this thing. Now I'm solving the problem for some random data. For uh, the number in here means how many items are there possible to put, uh, like you have the pool of the items. So if there's four, you only have to choose from four items. For brute force, it means two to the power of four, which is not a very large number, so it was fast. You can see 10 and 15 was fast as well, and number 20 is taking some time, and it's gonna get worse, and it's gonna get worse. If you are bored, you can just Control C it, and now you have some data for all the first except 20 and more. And now you can run it on Cyton, which is this. And it works again. It's also probably a little slow. We don't know nothing about how much. And now I'm gonna just end it as well. Okay, and now I have some, um, I have measured the time inside. <laughs> And if you go to README and you can get the this one, the last one, you need the matplotlib. If you don't have matplotlib, you have to get it from the repo. And now you have times PDF. And you can see, uh, based on the problem size, the time, how much it took. Uh, it's a logarithmic scale, so don't be surprised. It's almost linear. It's actually very exponential. And you can see the blue thing is Python. 
the green thing is, uh, or yellow, or whatever is that number, Cyton, and we didn't change the code, and we get a little boost up for free just by compiling it. And now, if you want to get the better performance, you need to add static <coughs> typing. You will never get by the thing that it is exponential. Even if you use Cyton and black magic and you cut your wrist on, in the middle of crossroad in the middle of the night, it will still be exponential. So only thing we are changing is the multiplication constant for for the time. And, but it could be like thousand faster or something like that. So what you are supposed to do now in your well formed pairs on the beginning uh, is to look at the C solver thing and try to optimize the code. You're not trying to optimize the algorithm. Keep it naive as it is. It's a very naive brute force algorithm and you can get much faster and not even exponential things if you try guessing and stuff like that. But just keep it as it is. Uh, of course you can like rewrite these things, but the, the solve procedure should be the same thing for each number from zero to two to the power of number of items minus one. You just try to get the combination, calculate weight and cost, see if it fits and if it fits, yeah, you know. And then if you, if you do some changes, you can, uh, important thing, when you do some changes to the code, you have to run build X in place again. You probably are not used to it if you are programming in Python mostly, but now we are compiling the code. So don't be scared that you have made changes to the files and the times are always the same. Every time you want to run it again, uh, you want to run this again. I didn't do any changes, so it says it's up to date, but if I would like go in here and uh, do some very useful change, maybe even a new line, it will compile this again. If you have a syntax error in Cyton, uh, it should tell you, and the lines are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you should probably be able to tell what's going on and what's the problem is. If you are not, just ask me or your fella or whatever. And let's try to put a very large distance between the two dots on, on every um, column. And each time the, the distance between the dots is the same distance as between those number on the left, you just made it faster 10 times. And as you can remember probably from the Fibonacci thing, we made it how, like 100 faster. So it should be able to do at least two of those steps. Uh, I don't know for sure. Maybe this problem will not be able to get this much performance boost. But uh, since I guess it's a very, it runs very often, even more often than, than the Fibonacci thing, uh, you should be probably even able to make the distance even larger. If you have a stronger hardware, uh, you can let the calculation go further and further up to something like 40. Uh, but on my hardware, the 40 thing on Python, it, I went to get an app to get it done. Yeah, and it took a long time. In the meantime, uh, there are plenty other things you can do with uh, Cyton. Uh, yeah, like using C libraries, interact with NumPy, and stuff like that. I didn't cover this on the workshop because I think we just focus on one thing. Uh, they have excellent documentation, so just go to docs Cyton.org, or, or get the book. Uh, in the slides, you have the slides in the repo in the form of a uh, tech file. Um, there is a link um, to a GitHub repo that has examples from the book. You can find it useful. Or if you want to contact me, uh, it's miro at redhead.com uh, later. If you want to contact me here, don't write me emails. Just raise your hand or shout at me. It's going to be faster. Uh, I have some scarves uh, here, and yeah, so if you 
get some very good results at the end. I have a scarf for you, Defcon thing that looks like Cometa Bruno. Uh, yeah. I have a question. When I worked with Cypher like a few years back, I guess, uh, I used, uh, there's magic import in the library, which uh, if you import it and install it, then if you import any uh, module, which is Cypher, it's it automatically compiles, like every time. It was very good for debugging and you know like uh, editing, but it doesn't seem to work anymore. Something. Let's just look to the clever book. Uh, I it's know what you mean. Like fix, fix import. Fix import. Yeah. It worked for me on Windows, but here's uh, compiling on the fly with fix import. Maybe there changed something in the yeah. time. Yeah, I have the same thing. You have import fix import, and you have to fix import install before importing. It. Yes. So it doesn't. And then you import. Yeah. And you import your module, and it's supposed to automatically. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't work anymore. It works for me on Fedora 21, which is out of date. So, yeah. so. It seems like... I don't know. Go on. What about threads? What about threads? So you can create threads in uh, like normal C threads. But uh, then you can get some cool sick faults and stuff like that again. Yeah. Uh, I, nev I never... But they run in parallel, right? They, yeah, you can have your sick faults in parallel. Uh, well, you can have that in Python too. Yeah, basically, what you can also probably use async IO and use C code from all these things inside. Uh, there is a last chapter in here I have not been able to finish yet. It's called Parallel Programming in Cypher. So if you're really interested, I can like show it to you now. And products loops. the slides but I forgot to fill it thank you so if you if you have your Cyclone code which is uh, <laughs> at the beginning it's basically the same code as, as Python uh, you can use annotate it's not in the slides it's on the readme and so you can use Cyclone annotate and the file you want to annotate and this will produce a HTML file you can open in the browser and yeah, it's yellowish and more yellowish it gets uh, it does black magic to know what type goes in so it does it basically means if you type it statically it's gonna be less yellow and and if you click on the line somewhere this is the C code that's generated what? just by this magic in it that can take anything but if you use it more, you essentially want to get anything. Uh, the thing about the Cyton and the C code that it generates is very long uh, and very ugly, but it, it's uh, because it tries to optimize it. So if you are not a very, like if you, some might say, if I write my extensions in C directly, it will always be better than Cyton. Probably not. I'm not sure. So more yellow it gets, it's worse. Uh, it imports iter tools, which are never used, I guess. So you can just get rid of that. Uh, and this is not so yellow. It just returns two things. But yeah, you can see here, if you haven't seen any, uh, any C Python API, this is how it looks like.
It's very nice and readable and stuff. Thank you for, for your comment. I can give you a scarf for that, just if, even if you don't want to uh, type anything. Unless you already have one. <laughs> but, but you are not fan of Poeta Brna, Brna and you would be afraid in your hometown or any other. It doesn't generate the interface for you. You unfortunately have to create a PTX or PXD file, P PXD file, uh, which is essentially a copy of the H, .h file, header file from C or C++, but you remove some unnecessary syntax string D from C. Uh, but you can change stuff in there, and then you can C import this file and use the function. What I did when I want to get like a the, the header file was very large. I wrote a Python code that took the header file and, and generated this. They essentially say in the documentation something like, Cython will not automatically generate uh, all of this for you because this and this and this. Uh, I can show you how it looks like. So this is a PXD file for Admesh STLH. Uh, if I try to get also the header file, so STLH is here. Uh, there are some type of structs in here, so you have them here as, hell, uh, as well. And then you have some uh, function definitions or declarations in here. Uh, you remove stuff like ex extern and you remove semicolons and you just basically copy paste it. Uh, the thing is you only need those you're going to use. And here's a different, uh, you have to use C type dev if it's a type dev struct in the header file, or you have to just use uh, C dev if it's just a struct. And you can have even enums, I get C type dev enum. And sometimes if you know that uh, you will never access the internal parts of the structure, but still you're gonna like take the structure from one function and pass it to another. All you need to do is uh, ha have to have it, but inside you can just use pass. It says like, I don't care, whatever. And I have a very ugly code that basically takes this and converts it to this. Uh, it might be done with regular expressions maybe, but I have, I will just read each line and for each line I do some magic. If you want to program the operations yourself, I would recommend Cython, but there are probably also libraries that are written in Cython already, like NumPy and SciPy, that probably already have these basic operations like matrix multiplication and vector operations. 
So if, if you if you just want to use regular matrix multiplication, you can use NumPy. Uh, if you want to do some <coughs> weird multiplication, as you define it for yourself, and you need to code it for yourself, that Cyton is a good choice for that. na hardwareu? No, to beží to... Uh, nebeží to právě, takže beží, beží úplně jedno, koho to máš jedět. Mně to teda teraz běží paralelně, ale v jednom půjčám pajce na jednom sajtu. <laughs>
standard. Než se dal jenom se stavnou jako byl to zodpovědnost a nejde na nic napad. Byl byste nejistý kolaps, kolaps pro protest? No a na tom se dá říct, že to ještě nikdo nic? A bylo těžký tam vlastně se na půdu? No? Řekl jsem ten kód pro programu, tak jde ten projektor na lepší optimalizaci. Použiješ ten AOT? No musíš, mám by si tu blízk té klasy, by si mám použít CDEF klas, než nemůžeš nic optimalizovat. A potom musíš prostě všechny ty pravené v podstatě stavy skopikovat a pokud chceš mít něčeho list, tak si ho musíš namalovat jako list of pins například. A vlastně ty nejnovější funkce, které nejsou vůbec von, ty můžeš mít jako CDF. A má už umělý ten type, a i ten jsou. Tedy v tom stejný tě musíš zobrat ten, co to je, dictionary, a uložit si ho do struktu, alebo do jednotlivých skleněných a do array of structs. To si musíš vytvořit struktury, do kterých se budou ty věci. Nech se zaručovat. Takže někdy v tom file, když vlastně hore nadefinuješ cdef, struct, item, a ta bude mít double cost a double play. A tak dále. A ten graf se to dostal z toho nakonec? Ten vridničku je ten... Když se ty otvorí vridničko, tak je tam ten plot times, ten typu. Ale teraz si bežal iba ten site rozmer. Musíš ešte predtým niečo robíš ten plot times. Tak spustí to isté, čo predtým, ale miesto site napíšeš v Python. Můžeš to bežet, můžeš to bežet zároveň na Pythonu a na Sajtu a když zjistíš, že ti přibudla liadka, tak z jiného terminálu připlotovat ten times. Vlastně se to robí na základě file. To mám ale ještě vypadný IP z těho přijedně? No, no, tak už je tam bude. nějakou svou strukturu, tak si nad tím vlastně nadefinuješ tu strukturu a místo toho slova double bude služet na větší mm. Takže je tam
Sorry? Uh, if you're done, just this. I, I talk like you're coded and then I go help you if you have problems. He's not coded already. That's just concentration by the Cyclones. He has a little bit of problems to lose, but if you want to better the concentration, you should add static cyclones. That's the point. So, Something like this is better. Thank you. 
pretty inefficient. We use list or big inside view. So both list and big, they can contain basically anything. And they can be whatever they need to be long. Once it's a, once it's a normal pointer to a structure, and you index it with some number, the, the thing will just know the memory offset and it will grab the value. Once it's a Python list, it has to find the value which takes about one hundred.
right? Actually, no. no. Actually, no. He was lying to me. We are over time. Or no. we, are, we are done. Well done. We have done already.